Welcome and welcome back to another episode of the For the Healthy Health Podcast. Where we talk about conscious living, self-awareness, and everything in between. I'm your host, Re. Sunset Tim. Thank you for joining us and allowing us to be a part of your journey. How you feeling? I'm tired. Sleepy. I woke up this morning and I wanted to go back to bed. And I assumed that that feeling would go away at some point, but it's still here. I want to go to bed. I want to go. I just want to, I don't know. I'm feeling lazy today. I don't know. I just, I need to prioritize going to bed on time, maybe. We've been watching Power every evening or Ghost, Tariq. You've been watching Power. You ain't been watching Tariq? I've been accompanying you. Then don't accompany me. Don't I've accompany me today, you. then. I don't need a. I don't need company today, then, <laughs> if you're not watching it with me. But I glance at it from every now and then. You is, are a bald-faced like, lie. It seems like a very uh, intriguing show. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I'm happy that Sax character is dead. You are a bald-faced lie, Jody. Like I said. Oh. oh I, if I ask myself, I guess <laughs> well, how Well, to be honest, like, I ain't... We've been beef, low-key beefing we today anyway. All the time, Because <laughs> we've been fake beefing, but... Yes, I'm going to say it. I don't say it all the time. I only said it one other time when it was true. Anyways. That ain't never true, baby. You can't be for me. You be for yourself. Oh. <laughs> ain't never true. Okay. How are you today? I'm good. I didn't sleep that well. Um, I don't know what it was. I just couldn't stay asleep last night. I had them nights every, every three weeks. Even if I go to bed on time, it's one of them nights where I just can't sleep well. Uh, I usually gain, gain it all back, though. Um, outside of that. Water been fair at best, not good, but fair. Gym been on point. Maybe that's why we tired, because you ran three miles, three and a half miles yesterday. I've been on my cardio heavy as well. I did weights yesterday, though, glutes. That could be it. Uh, I can't quite pinpoint exactly what it is, but something kicked my ass. Couldn't sleep well either way, go. Uh, but I'm going to bounce back, though. That I ain't too much worried Always. about. Um, but yeah, I feel good. New tape gonna be out soon. Yes. Sleep on a low hill. Um, my tape name is never. It's it's had like five different names, but right now that's the name it's gonna go with. I think we'll stick with that one for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, I've been good. Great. How y'all been? From the cubes. From the cubies. From the cubes. With that out the way. What are we rapping about today, Miss? Miss. Miss Thang. Oh, not Miss Thang. So, we actually heard this on TikTok, this phrase, balance your ambition. I heard okay. it on TikTok. Yeah, and I, yeah. think I, I think someone tagged us in a video where someone said that, and I had never heard that expressed so beautifully. So, when we, we knew when we heard it, like, wow, that's really interesting. That's something that we could talk about, that we might have a lot to say about. And for me, balance your ambition just means prioritize. Mm-hmm. I think, I, I, I was going to say it's human beings, but I think for me personally, there is so much that I want to do in this world. I think back to the time where, what, 2018, we had all these business ideas that we <laughs> wanted to do. And it was like, that was like, like was this, you know? Tornado, though clusterfuck yeah and don't get me wrong it's important necessary to be ambitious but we find ourselves doing so many things to where we're actually not doing anything at all and I've been in that place so many times in my life pretty much up until this point where I am now you know what I mean I've learned to keep it simple simplify Simplify my life in a nutshell. Um, But, yeah, that's what we're talking about today. What does that mean to you, balance your ambition? Um, It really for my creators, right? For the people who see life and they want to mold it into a certain way. For the creators, this is like a life tool to lend some of that stress that we put on ourselves off. Balancing the ambition is knowing, like, what I want to focus on. Like you said, a priority. Yeah. What is top priority? What is not? As creators, we want to do it all. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it all, we have all these ideas, but we don't have an abundance of energy or time or focus even for that matter. You can't do everything, five different businesses at a hundred percent, give all of them your all at once. It's uh, damn near impossible to run that many businesses uh, for one person too. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it starts out with just you. Like you said, back to our cluster fucking 2018, we wanted to do, there was a t-shirt brand by the name of Good Good People. The Good Brand. The Good Brand. The Good Brand. Um, <laughs> t-shirts and like clothes and stuff like that. But we were also websites. Yeah, websites. We websites. Uh, photography. Social media management. Social media management. Photography. We was, uh, thrifting. Thrift shop. Thrift shop. And all of these things did like kind of relate and connect with each other. It's, it doesn't really matter. It's still yeah, so it, many it was things. So many things. And you still had your YouTube page. Oh, yeah. I, was I still, still doing had YouTube. my music. You still doing your mu music. We're still, we were still parents. Still parents. Is, we, <laughs> we tried to do so much. It was hilarious one week. Um, we ordered so many things off Amazon for every business and we looked at them all and we got them in the room. Like, where the fuck does all this shit go? He like, got a heating press, heat press, new cameras and like this. Where the fuck does all this shit go? We didn't even have enough plugins for the shit we bought. You hear me? It's overwhelming. It was, it, it was ridiculous, but that's because I didn't know how to balance my ambitions. I didn't know. Now I have this idea of the primary slot, secondary, and then there's a third, right? My music is like my primary slot. That's the primary thing that I do in life. Yeah. It's just the one thing that I do. It's my thing. Um, for me, it's almost like a primary and a secondary, but for the Healthy Hoes podcast, it's like the other thing that I do. And in third are just ideas of other things I've always wanted to do in life. Open a coffee shop. We both A we, bookstore. A yeah. bookstore. Get into real estate. Like, these are other things that... Get into, yeah, passive income. Passive income. These are other things that, believe me, will get done in my life. But I feel like primarily, the the one that is in the primary spot, if I take care of that one, that takes care of everything else. Exactly. And that's how I put them in a file cabinet, per se, my dream, right, mm -hmm. of everything. And how I balance the ambition is focusing in on what is, like I said, the priority versus what, what is still in the dream stage, the idea stage, and then what is actually here with me. Yeah, and you know, I think that we want to do all of these things at once mm -hmm. is because I think we can feel like we're running out of time. Yeah. Obviously, everything is temporary, and it's no different when we're talking about life. That is true. We know that we all have an expiration date and it's like you want to conquer and accomplish everything that we're meant to do while we're here breathing on this earth in this physical form yeah so i think it can cause a lot of stress and anxiety so many different feelings that makes us feel like we don't have enough time and i, I have to do this today uh, oh tomorrow's not promised and that's very true you know Mm -hmm. But you are doing yourself a disservice by doing so many things. Because ultimately, and I'm speaking from experience, yeah. you're doing nothing at all. It's impossible. It is completely impossible to run five different businesses all by yourself. Like yeah, five different always. brand new baby businesses baby. all by yourself so and get it and, and get it done. You got five businesses and you, you working your ass off and you had 10% on each business. So you 50% done, but ain't nothing done in a, in a sense, right? Yeah, almost That's, ain't almost ain't done. Yeah, it ain't that shit for my for a large part of our lives was that was the problem. We were doing so many different things. We couldn't fucking land on one thing mm -hmm. and execute that and give it all we had mm -hmm. because we did so much. When we finally stopped and we killed all the little baby businesses we had, put them in side pockets or wherever we stuffed them off to. And we focused in just on the primary music for the healthy hoes. I mean, at first it was just the YouTube channel. It's just I'll just say content creation. Yeah, content creation. We focused in on them, then things started to blossom. Yeah. YouTube took off. My music yeah. sounded better than ever. Yes. For the healthy hoes, y'all see like where we yeah. at. Yeah. 
if y'all like OG with us, y'all seen us when we had like 500 followers. Mm-hmm. So, um, congratulations to us. I think for the Healthy Host page is 15K on 15K NC. per. Uh, I think TikTok is what, like 11K. And, and everything like started from the bottom, but mm-hmm. like none of this takes place if we have that same unbalance in our ambition. Like, yeah. we'd probably, the podcast wouldn't even be here, right? Because we had another podcast that, you know, like I said, we that didn't go so we far. We did, we did. But they had, we had the podcast, we had the thrifting, YouTube page, music, and this is all at one point in time. And mm-hmm. then you were still like branding and doing stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, for businesses, yeah. Oh, God, we was a fucking mess. We was a hardworking God. mess that went nowhere at that yeah, point. Yeah, it's too much. And I know we keep referencing businesses and you mentioned that it's for creators and it is but balancing your ambition can be for anybody i know we have a lot of younger people who may be Mm -hmm. in school and college a prime example is you know you're in college you're taking these college courses and then you have all these extracurricular activities trying to be a part of almost every group you'll be exhausted Mm -hmm. by the end of that and you it's like you can't give your all to any of those things you can't give your undivided attention to all of those things you know what i'm saying so just want to get it example that was like non-creative how many of y'all are creators and i mean it's a lot of them bro and a lot yeah and i mean when i say creator i mean exactly that it's no limits to that word yeah, yeah. just curious let us know how many of y'all are creators and what y'all got going a lot of y'all i know got some dope shit going on i'll come to some of y'all pages and i'll be blown away yeah at the shit that y'all do y'all y'all pretty dope y'all are dope of course of course and something else i wanted to say because we add, we always ask questions I created a Google form Mm -hmm. and I wanted everybody to know that I created a Google form and it'll be, it's linked in the podcast notes. Um, So click on that. It's just like a way for us to talk to them until Mm -hmm. I figure out how else to talk to them. (laughs) But yeah, so just wanted to say that. When I think about ambition, one of the things that comes to mind is purpose. When I used to think about purpose, I used to think about one particular thing that I meant to do my entire life. Mm. And I've been reading The Mountain Is You. Well, listen to it at the gym. One thing about, okay, let me, I'm going to say this. Audio books, I love listening to audio books. But I got to have the physical book too. I don't know. I feel like I'm a visual learner. So I hear something and I can go back and look at it in the book. You I mean, feel I, me? I get that. I don't need both. One of the other, I'm cool. I'm really? Good. Y'all don't need both. Mm-mm. I need both. I just yeah. You do that often. Yeah. It's costly. It's not costly. Books are ten dollars. Then the Audible is another. I actually have like seven credits. Seven credits. That's yeah. Gonna, that's gonna run out. It hasn't. Especially now that I'm listening to Audibles now. What do you listen to on Audible? P O M baby. If y'all Tell know the people what P O M is. The psychology of money. Yeah. It, it's doing it's doing wonders for my um, financial department. Yeah. I'm. I'm listening to that one next. Yeah, it's fire. Yeah. Highly recommend it if you try and get your uh, bag right. Definitely. And, and I, Oh, my bad. Not just your bag right, but the feelings around getting the bag. That, that's a specific thing that makes this book so good. It talks about the human, like the human aspect of like humans and money, basically. That, yeah. That, thing, that relationship. But go yeah. on. Yeah. So when I used to think about purpose, I used to think of one particular thing that I meant to do my entire life. Mm-hmm. And... Your purpose is not necessarily tied to a long life thing. Your purpose can change day to day, week to week, decade by decade. Purpose is also linked to your career aspect, right? Yeah, a lot of times. Which that is, that's important because you have to think about the fact that you go to a job, you, you, like when you're an adult, you, you work a lot. You're going to yeah, be yeah. at this place of business a lot so yeah. you need to like it yeah absolutely i don't think we realize that most of our lives the quality hours of our lives meaning like as we wake up and we got the most energy for our lifetime will be spent at a job so you might need to like this because nobody gets the better eight hours out of you than your job will. exactly exactly you, you rest it they get the best eight hours out of you they get the more than your family the family gets you after that is done you're tired mm-hmm. and stressed maybe you know, whatever else gets you after that. So, yeah, you need to like this shit. Definitely. But also, your purpose could be an example in the book is your purpose was to make someone smile today. Mm. Right? And then I think what we don't realize is the fact that just by us existing, that's our purpose. 
the world that. wouldn't be exactly how it is right now without us existing in it. So by us just being here serves a purpose. It's, it's hidden to each of us. Like you may not see your purpose of being here or just by existing, but like, yes, just by existing. That is your purpose. I'm not going to get too heavy into that, but yeah, your purpose is not it. And I think too, that can be frustrating as well. And kind of like it can it can cause a lot of anxiety just because you think about your purpose I think I find out a lot of people are looking for their purpose and that's okay because I kind of feel like if you don't really know what your purpose is or what what you want to do in this life that just means you have more room to grow and understand yourself a little bit more you know I get that um I've never actually been one to believe in purpose well, for me personally, mm-hmm. I've always felt that purpose was, how do I put this, too one-sided and too goal-orientated. Because I love how you put it. Like you said, your purpose said it could be just as simple as making somebody smile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get that. And you said it changes and it shifts. I get that 100%. Yeah. I, I think it's more dangerous when people have a purpose. Like I was put here to play ball okay. or something like that. Okay. Because... I use basketball for an example. Here comes the sports shit, ladies. Here um, it comes, ladies and gentlemen. Like a long career in the, as an athlete is like fourteen years. Okay. But it's actually an extremely short career time. Like, right? You can be a lawyer for like fifty years, doctor forty years. You, it's like unlimited. But as an athlete, you got about fourteen solid years to play the game for itself. So after an athlete has completed his time. We use LeBron James. Everybody knows that. Is. After, he's, after he's completed his time in his league, is his purpose field? Yeah, that's what I was What's just going to say. Yeah, is his purpose field? Is he done? Like, And that kind of like validates what I was saying in a sense. That's why it's – in a sense, I guess I was saying like a purpose really isn't a purpose because yeah. if you – if your purpose was to play basketball and your career is over after 14 years, you, so you lose yourself. A lot of A lot of guys do. Like from from what I've looked up, a lot of guys do lose themselves. Yeah, I I've always connected more with like every human has a gift, and I think the purpose was to share the gift with the world. Mm-hmm. And when I say gift, it's not necessarily a monetizable thing. Okay. Now, how we use that gift can be monetized. Yes. I've I felt like, and I have for a couple of years now. Even when I was younger, my gift was connection and empathy. I feel like people always tell me. Not that it's, not that I've always wanted it, but people always have been able to open up to people me. People always, and I, rem, I, facts. That's like always, I remember a point always. in our life. I think we was we back home then. I can't remember. I can't remember. But people always come to you like with like just being vulnerable. Vulnerable, with you. like telling me shit that they don't want to tell nobody else, and they feel safe doing it. Yes, you make people feel safe. That's the thing. And I've always felt like I had a gift in empathy and connection, which now I turn my gift into something I could do every day. It's like, that's why I chose the rap. Mm-hmm. So I can connect with people and have empathy towards like people and put that in my music and show gratitude, you know, and patience. A real slow life kind of thing is, is why I got into music to use my gift. Yeah. That's how I monetize my gift. Um, just throwing that out there. But I've always thought that humans were more connected to a gift than actual purpose. I love now, that. Now, you can use your gift with purpose. Intention. With intention. Right, and you can use it with malice too. It could be, it could be the other way around. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People open up to me. I could also, you know, fuck, go, go tell, go tell everybody in the world. Like, you, probably, you probably told me though. I probably have told you. <laughs> hey, have you seen it? Yeah, though. It'd be like, yeah. girl, don't tell nobody. But I ain't gonna tell nobody about. except for my man. Yeah, <laughs> like it, everybody tell their significant other. So if you tell somebody something, they got a significant other or a real significant other. You may as well you may as well just told both of them at the same yeah. time and just shared it at once. Because motherfuckers going to tell. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and at this point, everybody know it, too. I think everyone knows. Because my brothers, they'll talk to you if they can't get a hold yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah, they'll definitely call me. You know what I'm saying? So, especially Trent. Especially Trent. What's up, sis? I'll be, I'll be like, <laughs> here you go. Give it to me. <laughs> like, all the time. So, <laughs> just watch out. For me, personally, like I said, watch out with purpose. If you one of them people that kind of rub you the wrong way, it ain't got to necessarily be a, a negative thing or a stigma around purpose. But um, some people find light in it. And others, you know, it, it can be stressful. It so. can be pressure. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say, so, like, just step. You go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, like you was going to say, just, you know, step back from it. If you can't 
find your quote unquote purpose or your gift right now. Just keep living and keep embracing the world around you and something will light a fire in you that hey this is always happening to me because like i said my my gift for empathy and connection wasn't always visible like it took me till i was 20 something to even notice like damn uh, strangers and confide in confide me. in me for some fucking reason i used to think people just love to hear themselves talk but I mean, after a while, I found motherfuckers do. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> motherfuckers do. But I thought I found, I found out like they not sharing all this with like the average motherfucker. Like yeah. they not sharing all that. Yeah, so fact. that's how I found my gift or noticed it throughout the years. So pay attention in life, and it'll show you. Yeah, purpose. Just that it can it can cause a lot of pressure on us as human beings. But just keep living, keep learning about yourself, keep growing, and ultimately just do what feels good. Do what naturally feels good for you what naturally is exciting for you you know what i mean and what's ultimately what's easy it's easy yeah, for you yeah. to talk to people it's easy for you to write content creation that shit comes so easy to me i sent i sent my friend kim a video from eight years ago when we talked about that thrift shop i had yeah. a i had a little thrift shop um and she was like man Rhea, you was born for this shit <laughs> like <laughs> that's what she told me yeah, yeah. yeah she said to me and, and well, I, you was though Thank you. But sometimes you don't realize until you hear other people say that, but she's right. It comes yeah. so easy to me, and I do enjoy doing it. But don't get it twisted. Just because you enjoy doing something or something comes easy to you doesn't mean there won't be hard days. Yeah, yeah. No, and, it, and it don't necessarily mean it's your purpose. There's a lot of dudes that, like, back to sports ladies. There's a lot of dudes, like, in the NBA, they don't love basketball. I hear other players, like, talk about it all the time. Like, not everybody in the league loves basketball. Really? Some of them were just very tall, and they were actually good at it. And, like, fuck, it's one of the highest paying jobs you can get out there. So they just fucking, they stuck with it and shit, made millions. But, like. What's funny is up until this moment, I assumed you never, everybody, you assume everybody loved, there it, but, loved it. But, no, there are plenty of players who will say that very few people love, that very few of them love the game, actually love it. It's just like rapping. Very few niggas actually like love rap, like the history of it, the everything about like hip hop. And it's just niggas who was like, shit, I'm going to drop a tape. Like, let me ask you this. The people who did it, but don't love it. And this could be music, basketball, whatever the case may be. Do they stay with it? That's my question. A lot of them stay with it for the bag, but you can clearly see the distinction between the dudes who like love the game. And the dudes who just there for a check, it's like what they will go do, how far they take it, how they play. You know what I mean? You can tell just by watching some dudes like, nah, he don't just like play this shit. He love this shit. To hit the shot, to step hit, you got to be in the gym all day. And you can't be in the yeah. gym all day if you don't love that shit. But Facts. other guys, you can tell by the end of their career, Steph, like in his 14th year, and his body, like, he, he looks good still. Other dudes getting their 14th year and they getting chubby. Yeah. Cause them ain't got the same drive for the game. Yeah, they don't you know have the, it's the real, same ambition. Same for ambition it. for the game, like. Yeah. And it, it, in music, you can hear like a rapper who don't give a fuck about the game like that. They come out good. Over a while, it just like starts to like lag, and it's like they it's dull and they kind of over with. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And here's the thing too. It's kind of it's kind of referencing that you're allowed to change. You are. As human beings, we come in many forms. You're allowed to change forms. An example is I spent so much of my life, not my life, I would say the past seven years being so passionate about YouTube, mm -hmm. creating content on YouTube. And all of a sudden, my passion for that part of my life, it changed. And... I was kind of like sad. Do you remember that I was yeah, like, yeah. I was sad, like, confused. Exactly. I was like, what's happening? I don't, I really don't want to do this, but that's because another passion was introduced to me. I didn't realize, and, and sometimes that shit can catch you off guard. Like, I didn't realize that I would love this as much as yeah. I love this. Yeah. I, I had no idea, but you're allowed to shift. You're allowed to exist in many forms you allowed to manifest and then do another manifestation exactly you allowed. that's the beauty of life it's, it's it's no fun if nothing changes true which leads me into my next idea or thought i think a lot of times we don't know 
the price for something before we go all in on it. We bring everything up to the register and I don't think we got a right calculation of what it really costs or what we think is going to be sacrificed, right? I think me and you were leaving the gym going to the Goodwill mm. and I was explaining it to you that when, let's say somebody wants to get their body in order, they want to start working out, you know, they can feel better, look better, you know, all around health. And they think that to do this, they send themselves, I got to sacrifice hard days in the gym. But that's not actual the actual sacrifice. The actual sacrifice is you need to not scroll and watch television late at night so you can get good rest and get to the gym. Yeah. That's the real cost of going to the gym. Mm -hmm. We think it's just getting to the gym and going hard. You can get to the gym and go easy and still get results. Yeah. But first off, you have to cut the price and we pay the price on every other thing. People go to school to be lawyers and doctors for a very long time. It's a, like, if you think regular student debt is something, like, those two is, yeah, like, insane. massive. A doctor, massive. But when a lot of these people get into their field and they realize how many hours a doctor actually works. Yeah. How many hours a lawyer actually works. They realize, well, damn, I'm not going to have, I don't have time for my wife. I don't have time for my kids. That is not knowing the cost of it. You can become a lawyer, you can become a doctor, but you didn't think about how much time that that job would take you away from your family, your community, from the world in general, to where you tapped in with this almost 11 hours a day, six times a week. You had no idea when you were a student, all you kind of saw was a great impact on the world and a salary. But yes, but just knowing the cost of what it takes to actually get the job done. And that's like that's knowing this before you go in, knowing how much you got to give up to get this thing actually done. And it, is it a fair trade off to you? Is it equal to you what you actually have to sacrifice versus what you gain? And I think sometimes we don't think about that, um, that aspect of it all. I, I'm a, a rapper. I definitely have ambitions and manifestations of like going on tour. Mm -hmm. And I have to be willing to pay the price that sometimes I won't be with my family. Right. You know what I mean? At times I won't be, and it'll be me out there by myself. That's one of the prices, like, it comes along with being, like, a, a traveling, a paid artist. So that's just something I have to sacrifice if I really want this thing. Yeah, I think sometimes the idea of certain things sound really good, and we don't, we don't foresee or, I guess, count. Like you said, think about the price yeah, yeah. of that particular thing, and... It just goes back to the question that you ask. Is this worth it? Is this price? Is this sacrifice? Is it worth it for you? Yeah, yeah, for whatever you're doing. Um, we all, like, everybody like gangster music. Everybody like shit like that. I definitely grew up on that shit. Like, in drug dealing, like, you have to, like, look at it like, damn, do I really want to sacrifice? Because if I get caught, that's life. Like, I might do 20 years with... Is it worth the sacrifice? Most times not, but people still choose. Like, we know mm -hmm. people every single day going to get arrested for it. People still choose it. You know what I mean? They get locked up and they get in front of the judge. Judge give them some time. And then they, like, world come crashing down, crying. Or they, a lot of times in society, you might see somebody, like, snitch to get avoid the time. When you knew the cost of what you were doing the yeah. entire time you were doing it. And a lot of times I don't think people calculate that. And you need to because managing your energy is a lot because that's something you can't get back. Once you like, exert all those hours of going to school to be a doctor or a lawyer, once you do all these things, that's energy you can't get back. Time that you can never get back. Agreed. So knowing this price could save you down the road. But mm -hmm. if you don't, then like I said, a lot of things, I'm not going to call it is wasted because it's all an experience that can shape the life that you're going into but you you will be hard pressed not to look back and say shit like I, I paid a lot for that and didn't quite know it you know what I mean yeah. you didn't know it was gonna be like this when you got there mm -hmm. I think too of course you need to know the price for what you can know the price for yeah yeah because some things will happen unexpectedly there are some surprises yeah there are surprises yeah but definitely know the price for the things that you can know the price for and expect the unexpected for whatever journey that you're on and embrace that unknown 
And I think that's why it's important to like what you're doing mm -hmm. and be passionate about it, be ambitious about that particular thing. Yeah, because if you start a business and it's going well, and then suddenly you hit a rough patch, if you're not passionate about it, you're going to be quick to you hear me. I'm going to grab up the little money I did make and I'm gone. Yes. But if you are passionate about it, you'll stick through the rough times. If you really connected with it, you'll fuck with it like that. Yeah, it's not going to. Because at the end of the day, I know doing certain, like we all got to eat. You know, yeah, we all got to get is. money to maintain a living. That's the society. That's the economy that we live in. Yeah, we're born in. That we were born into. Like, not yeah, by choice not at by all. Choice, you born into it. Yeah, so I think it's important that we do something that if it didn't pay us, we would still do. Nice. If we didn't get likes, follows, you know, outside external validation from it, we would still do it because we love it. We love how it makes us feel. We love how it makes other people feel. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I, I wanted to know that. That's really important. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't care if, if they put a limit on rappers that we could only make 50K a year, then I'd fucking have to rap for 50K and find some other money somewhere else. But yeah. I couldn't I couldn't stop making music. So you're right like, yeah. about finding your passion and, and sticking with it. Yeah, because I see, and for me, I know music is your outlet, your creative outlet. But for me, I don't, like, you can rap. I always used to think I don't have a talent. No, you got talent. Too, but girl, you got too much talent. <laughs> like, I you think... got, nigga got too much talent. Like everything you ever wanted to start, like it just went crazy. Well, and I think it's because I'm a, an ambitious person. No, no. If you if and that's and that's almost damaging for a person to think. Uh, they think that if you have ambition, if you are smart, if you are hardworking, then ultimately you will win. It's actually not as simple as that. To, is it not? To me, it's not as simple as a lot of people have ambition. Like a lot of people have it, like the desire to get it. And a lot of people work hard. But I know a lot of hardworking people who are ambitious. They don't they're not at the goals that they want to be. I don't think that is enough to get the job done or to I w I wouldn't tell anybody that those three things are enough. You actually need a combination of so many things, right? You don't have to be a master of all things, but you actually need to know some of this shit. Know yourself, at least, in this shit, you know what I mean? To yeah. get it done. Um, I've worked hard, because I've worked hard in my life and not got it done. Okay. You know, I I, I worked two jobs and uh -huh. shit like that. I was working hard. You were working very I hard. I was ambitious to pick up another job, but, like, it, it wasn't getting it done. So something needed to change, mm -hmm. right? So I, I don't think hard work is, is it's not enough. I think working hard is one of the biggest lies I've ever been told in my yes, life. Yes, I think I think it's so much more to it than that. I'm not even gonna get all the way into that shit, but it's just so much more to it. Just knowing yourself is a huge key yeah. of it all. So many doors open. So you, it's just like you see the world in such a different light mm -hmm. when you know yourself because you then start to understand everything around you. You just know this different shit. Yeah, I, there was a time when we worked when we lived in Texas. I had uh we had just kind of got there. I was actually going to H and R Block to file my taxes one year, <laughs> and I got there, and I was in the parking lot. I was finna get out the car, our little Honda Civic, love that car. And shout out to Hondisha. Shout out, shout out to Hondisha. She done got us everywhere. Um, and I looked across the street at this brick building. It was like. I could see us like opening, like I said, I've always wanted a coffee shop, bookshop for the healthy hoes, recording studio. Yeah, any, any and everything. Beautiful brick building, nice glass windows. And they did cat photography. What? I said the same fucking, th I said, and it was downtown in Fort Worth. I said, you know what? If that nigga can do cat photography, and that's all he, he didn't say human photography, dog photography he only in he, he had pictures of all the cat pictures he had took and people were walking in it wasn't like business was slow cuz had business coming in if this man can do cat photography i can do any fucking thing i, I can do, do anything out here like <laughs> and it's strange enough we live in times where you can simply you can take pictures anything. of cats and make yeah. a living anything is possible that's but that's insane whoever owns that cat place i'm pretty sure that's not their first job yeah but they found the niche in something so it's not just hard work you have to find something you care about 
and you you actually are passionate about and work that. Yeah. And you can do that shit for two hours a day mm -hmm. versus a motherfucker working hard for eight hours a day, and you might actually yield better results in the end. I feel like it's passion meets ambition meets the market. I can get that. Creativity, yeah. too. Absolutely. Creativity. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do feel like once you find your little crack to, to slide in, it's it's a game over. It's game over. After that, can't nobody tell you shit no more. Nah. You're going to take off. And just going back to what you said about me, I think being able to do a lot of different things, I think that can be a curse. It in is a, a sense. curse. We've all, we spoke about that before. It is yes. a fucking curse to be able to do it all because you would think about doing it all. Yes. It's... I thought about being a politician. I think you could be a politician. But see, that goes the fucking problem. Like, you telling me I can do it? I actually would like to do it at one point in my life. And again, you got to balance it. So it's, at it's, some point in your life, you could probably do that. Would y'all niggas vote for me? I would vote for you. You would? I would vote for you 100%. Thank you. Sunset 10 for president. For president. I'm thinking We're more. going for the highest office. If we're going to do it, we're going to go for the highest office. No, I don't want presidency. You don't. You nah, could be the second black like president. I could be the second black president. Well, we got we... Kamala. She was vice president, though. That's true. She should run for president. She should run for president. But I don't know. I don't know. I'd rather do like the mayor. I of could a see city. you as the because mayor. Like, I feel like mayors be more in, like with the community is what I'm trying to be. Oh, the president is like looking out for like national kind of things. I, I don't, feel I don't, you. I don't think they actually really fuck with the people on that, on the ground level type thing. Mm, yeah, go ahead. Carry on my grandma legacy. I will. Your grandmama was a mayor. My grandmama was not quite the mayor, but hardworking. Yeah, she's amazing. We love her. I don't know why it just came to my head. I was going to say my grandma too, but no, she was not. I guess like in na naturally you'd be like, yeah, my grandma too. Yeah, but nope, she Line was not ass. the mayor. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, nope, nope. She was not the mayor. Awesome woman though. Taught me everything. Amazing. Humble beginnings. Very humble. And through all this, I know it sounds like a lot. It ain't really a lot though. But when you're doing all this, you can exert so much energy and time. Mm-hmm. You can easily burn out. Ambition burns out a little bit. Motivation can burn out. Inspiration yes. can burn out. All of these things. And you have to be able to recognize when you're getting close to that burnout. Mm -hmm. And stop. I mean, just flat out stop. No matter what is going on, deadlines, whatever it is. Pushing past burnout never really has went well for anybody. Recipe for disaster. A absolute disaster when you go past your burnout and you just keep working. It's sloppy work, more than likely. Not passionate, uninspired. You might probably have to go back and redo it, which is, that'll add even more Man. onto the burnout. I done been there. Like, take it easy on self. Mm -hmm. That goes back to managing the energy well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Making sure you are consistent, but also not putting yourself into the dirt every single day going yeah. that hard. And just remember you you're a human being. Yeah. You are a human being. You're not a machine at the end of the day, you yeah. know? You're not a type 1.0, you know, in with 65 gigabytes or whatever it is. You're not a machine. Like you so said you have yeah. to get your rest. And when you need to recharge, find something that can always motivate you to get back in. Mhm. Mm um my family has been my recent motivation over these last couple months just trying to like I really want to help my family and get to a better spot in life. Um, I picked my my grandmother up, and I drove her halfway. My brother met me um, to drive her back home the rest of the way. The whole time, we were just, like, talking about our family history and things of that nature, and it just, like, it was very humbling, very motivational as well. So in my family, like, I know a lot of families, like, back in the day, I don't know about... I know black families used to be, like, huge. I yeah. think back in the day, everybody families was kind of yeah. like that. But I only know, like, black families. Like, you know, great-grandma, they had, like, 12 kids. Yeah, my great-grandma had nine Like, nine. Kids. That shit blows my mind to think people... First off, people was having nine kids, 12 kids, 13 kids, and with way less technology than we have yeah. now. And, like, they were healthy, fine. But my great-grandmother, Elnada, she had... Um, I want to say 12 children. My my grandmother is the uh, seventh oldest. And she was just telling me about the humble beginnings. And I was like, I don't know why, for the first time ever, it dawned on me to ask, where did they all live? What did y'all like? 
because I knew we, like, I, I had been to my grandmother's like main house she had most of her life, and it was still only three bedrooms. So I asked her, and she was like, well, by the time we got to that three bedroom house, a couple of her brothers and sisters were old enough to have been moved out. So it wasn't that crowded, but the first house that they lived in was a two bedroom house, 12 kids. My grandmother said there were beds everywhere. You go That's into a, crazy. You go into a room, there were like four beds. The living room, three beds. And wow. Mom and, and, and granddaddy and grandma bed, hey, three, four. They did what they had to do, mm-hmm. right? And that's where I'm, I'm coming from. My my grandmother used to help people give birth, like for a little bit of- Which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was just dope. Um, she worked wherever she could, um, department stores. Some of them, like, even though, of course, like, black people was, of course, free, but she still had certain limitations. She had to wear gloves to check mm-hmm. people out, mm-hmm. had to work at the black register and things of this nature. I come from one, come from that background, you know what I mean? Right. That alone, when I think about that, it always recharges me, like, I mm, mean. Okay, okay. It, that's, like, one way I, I avoid burnout, like, mentally or spiritually is, like, Thinking yeah. about what they had to overcome versus what I'm having to overcome. Yes. All I gotta get is a couple couple niggas to click like. Yeah. I think I'll be all right. Yeah. I think I think mentally I'm gonna be okay. All I gotta yeah. do is that, and I ain't gotta you know sleep in a room with four other people. Wake up, go to the living room, and there's four other people in there. Like that's a good point. They had a bed in the kitchen. That's crazy. <laughs> like, that's a good point, and just. Thinking back, like to our ancestors, they they have they paved the paved the way for us. They made sacrifices to the point where we get mm-hmm. to sit in our living room and talk to a community of people. people right? Get you know paid. that's 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 amazing. Get paid from home. It's just it's just so many things are so much different. Yeah, that's why like, I believe in yourself. Is like I said when even from my childhood to now, like the the job markets have so much change and what you mm-hmm. can do. Is, is flat out, it's crazy. When I wanted to be a rapper as a kid, there was like no home equipment. You could only like go to a studio. Yeah. Right? That was the only way I'm thinking that you could do it. I'm talking about when I was a kid, kid, nine, 10. Mm-hmm. Like you can only like go to a studio. But now like shit, you go on Amazon, you had your whole running studio to you by fucking Friday. Yeah. If you think about, you know, I guess what your ancestors went through and how they paved the way for you and just how times have evolved for you and how easy pretty much anything is, it's definitely a spiritual and mental recharge for sure. Yeah, it is. And I think one of the biggest reasons that we even experience burnout is because the whole point of this episode today, we try to do so many motherfucking things at once. Because I don't know what it is about doing a lot of things that make you feel like you're getting shit, shit done. Does. Make you busy. But it does. Like, busy. Busy yeah. isn't always good. People be like, busy, busy. busy. That's not good, bro. Busy, like, happiness is a fucking illusion sometimes, It's bro. such an illusion. Bi- illusion. Busy can make you... It makes you feel important. Like, you got like shit Like, you're done. getting shit done. You, you bought stuff out here. You know what I mean? Didn't do nothing but pay a couple bills and went to You hear me? You, you did everything. Not wing stop. <laughs> you did everything and nothing at all, my nigga. Yeah. Like, you hear me? Like, you busy. did everything and nothing at all. I've been there. Busy is a curse, bro. It's a curse. Because ultimately, when you tell me you're busy, ultimately, other people are running you right now. Yeah. Ultimately, you got to get all this done so other things are running you right now. And don't get me wrong. Doing your shit, whatever that it look like for you, it takes time. It, it takes, takes time. It it's takes time one of my favorite Beyonce lines. What song is it? I'm a boss. I ignore a lot of calls. Sometimes you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think when you tell people, I've been busy, like you want people to think you've been bossed up, you've been getting shit done. And yeah, yeah. that's a whole nother topic. topic whole but nother. yeah, you're doing everything and you're doing nothing at all. Take one step at a time, one thing at a time. I just, I don't. It's so crazy because I literally used to think like that, like doing so many things. It does. Yeah. It makes you feel like you're doing, like you're conquering the fucking world. Yeah, you're trying to gather everything at once. And you really, you think you're going up, but you're really just on the Stairmaster. You hear me? What? Like you think you're going up, but you're on the Stairmaster. You hear me? Like, you ain't really moving, bro. So take small steps. Micro steps as as atomic habits, as, micro shit. As, as no, nah, I was gonna say as my beautiful 
co-host is finna explain to y'all. Yeah, tiny, tiny micro shifts. I think that, and we've spoke about this before, and we're going to keep talking about the same shit, but differently yeah. until y'all can understand it. Because ultimately, I think we be kind of like, think, what do we talk about next? What do we talk about next? I don't think we personally understand the power and the, I guess, the energy transaction that we give by just sitting here and talking about yeah, our everyday yeah. thoughts. Cause that's essentially what this is here. We just, we just talking. This is like shit we would talk about every day. Mm -hmm. But my point being is we spend time on a particular project, whether it be, you know, a passion project, a business, school, a person, mm -hmm. you know, and we expect a return on our investment. Mm -hmm. We expect to manifest something in the physical form. Quickly, though. Quick. That's what I was going to say. At a particular time. Mm -hmm. Like, we expect if we, you know, shit, if I do go hard for three months, yep. I'm going to get a return on my investment. Mm -hmm. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And not only that, we be wanting, like, something huge to happen. Yeah, big. Like, big. And... The thing is, it's the tiny habits every single day that you put in, the tiny micro shifts mm -hmm. that eventually yields this big thing. And who knows? It may be a year, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Who knows? But it's the tiny micro shifts that equates huge transformations. Mm -hmm. Compounding interest. Compounding interest. Building it up. Yes. Uh, I think so many times, like you said, we're looking for their return on investment within three months, mm -hmm. 60 days, mm -hmm. 30 days. And a lot of the things, if it's something that's going to really impact your life, it's going to take time for the universe to build that. Facts. It's going to take time for the universe to put the entire play together. We yeah. can't think that something that's going to change our lives, something that's going to retire our mothers, take care of our children is going to happen in 17 days. Yeah, and have a positive impact on the world, you know? Unless you know how to steal real good. I mean. If you know how to steal real good, I guess 17 <laughs> days is good enough for you. You can rob banks, you can do steal. Like, you can steal real good. Unless you Saint, unless you are James St. James Patrick. Patrick or Tommy Egan, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can change. They change their lives really quickly. Like, boom. Right? I they, thought you don't watch Power, though. I don't watch Power. You sure, you sure are familiar with the characters. View power why you view so okay but anyways yeah like if you neek you know what i mean shout out to neek now i do be shout on my raising canaan god damn it daddy. you be on all of them stop I playing do. with I me i do shout out to neek shout out to joy badass did yeah. an amazing job that's character. a perfect example of somebody who when we talk about balancing our ambition yeah. and taking on many forms Perfect is it's, and he's not the only person. Like Wait. Method Man, we talked Method about Man. this man rapped was a creative genius, a, a musician yes. for years, a legend, a legend in Wu Tang, my dog. Like, you hear me? One of the ones. And now he is an actor, damn good, an actor, you. and is great at it. Yes. So just balance your ambition for certain parts of your life. Just certain parts of your life, you're going to prioritize different things. Absolutely. But getting, getting back to it, yes. Um, compounding interest, really just let it build up, bro. It's just, it's just almost as simple as saving a buck a day will lead up to something. You know what I yeah. mean? Saving $50 a yep. week, $100 a week is going to lead up to something. Mm -hmm. Steady putting the work out. Steady posting your content. Yes. Every other day, just being consistent with them people. You know what I mean? Finding your rhythm. The more you post, the more chances somebody will see it and share it. Yeah. Because that's all we can really bank on out here is putting the work out and then letting the universe do, do the rest do the most us. of it. I yeah. mean, we could try to force it. I see a lot of people try to force it. They come into my and DM. you can tell, yeah. Oh, go listen to my stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Go listen to my new album. Go mm -hmm. do this. And it's more of a force, but to me, it's much better when it all flows. Agree. And, and let the ebbs and everything flow yes. so brilliantly. The universe... But for something to be so big and impactful for your life, the universe got to have time to put a play like that together. Yeah. Also, I think, too, the reason why I've done this, and I think the reason why a lot of people do this, bounce from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing, because they haven't 
they don't have that patience for that one thing to take off. Yeah, and then the time period we live in in life, everything we see has already took off, so we believe it happened fast. Mm. When If you've never done it, when you go on your TikTok or Instagram Reels, notice that every reel that they show you is a viral reel. Absolutely. No, not me, though. I but know. most of them are. Most I do get are. a few that aren't, but... Yeah, I get... I get if they from people I follow or and stuff like that. But 90% of the reels you see will have very true 70,000 views, 40,000, 20, a million. They are like flooding you with the stuff that has quote unquote went viral. But if you go to these people's pages, a lot of times and you scroll all the way down, you will see the consistency that led up to the big boom. Yeah. Right. You go to somebody's page. I can go to your page, for example, and start at your first reel and see the first couple, like a 500 views, 700, 900. Then you finally get one and break a thousand. All of mine have over a thousand. All of them? <laughs> I think. Look, I'm dude, just kidding. I just a jokey you. joke. But I can remember the, I can remember like the first one that we did for Healthy Holes that like touched yeah. 2,000. And, like, and views aside, like the first reel we did or TikTok we did for our podcast, the ones we do now are so much better. Yes. So much yeah, you better. You got to keep going, like compounding, compounding interest. Like it all is like that. But like I said, them viral clips that Instagram and TikTok shoves down us makes us think that everybody is coming up overnight. Yeah. And I think that the society that we live in, as far as like when it comes to social media, Instagram, like, you know, it everything happens fast. And I think that can be a total mindfuck for creators. Creators. Any, any creators, business owners. That return on investment time is so skewed in today's time period that, like I said, if you're not careful, you'll be believing that you can become an artist in March and by April first win a Grammy. Yeah, like it's just it's just not it's just not working in that fashion. I don't care how good you are in 30 days of you making your first song. I I don't know if you're gonna win a Grammy in 30 days. Big yeah, dog. let's let's calm down and try to have a long outstanding career. Nas rapped. For, I want to say, better parts, Illmatic is about 20 years old, which is his classic album, his first album. Mm -hmm. It took Nas 20 years to win a Grammy. Wow. A legend, a living legend, Nas, 20 years to win a Grammy, bro. So let's calm down and take your time with this entire thing. Yeah. Let the interest compound, and it's coming for you if you keep working, talented, and you're being yourself. Absolutely. Don't forget that being yourself. Don't forget your heavy on that being yourself. Heavy on that. Dog, I, you damn near can do it in reverse order. Be yourself. Please, that's the that's the first thing. Be yourself. Because I know people, like, they don't even really post that often. But when they post, they are so unique and mean themselves. It's crazy. You know somebody else who just made, you know, Sean Brown that we like yeah, on Instagram? Yeah, he, not, he don't post, like, too. Can, he posts consistently, but it ain't like every day he posts. Well, that too, but also he used to be something else. Oh uh, yeah. He, he used to be music. like a was I don't know. Music? It wasn't something in music. I want to say a but either way creative goes, director but he has made this great shift into interior. Yeah. So Curve. so amazing. Like Bruh, crazy. one of our biggest inspirations. Yes. Crazy what you can evolve and, and work your way into yeah because when i think about balancing your ambition yeah just don't be afraid to evolve and shift and like literally shape shift you yes. can be whatever you want to be in this world don't limit yourself in due time though in due time but in just it's like time. it's just like focus and yeah. prioritize on one thing at a time so if I, for anything it's like get that one thing out the way i, I seen lebron james um I think he was asked about like the Hollywood, like he did Space Jam and all these other movies that he's doing. And he, they asked him like, how does he juggle it? He was like, primarily, I make sure the one thing, the big thing is good. He said, that's basketball. Yeah. If I'm good on the court. If everything I take care of that, everything else will take care of itself. Yes. You, yeah, you basically said that. It's so true. It'll take care of itself. Like, if I'm good with my music, everything else will take care of itself. Who it's going to get to? How is it going to get people? If I take care of making good music, ultimately it takes care of itself. Because I don't spend that much money on marketing, but my fans do a whole lot of marketing. They bring people. Yeah. They do the marketing if the song yeah. is good enough. And it makes me think about 
like your our fan base, you, me, our fan base is small, but it's mighty though. Yeah, I be getting shit done. Like you hear me? Like yeah, they push, fuck with you. People will push them line for you. They fuck with you, but they yeah. gotta fuck with you though. Yes. So be you above all things. Before consistency, before anything else, just make sure you being you. Yes, and uh, we talk about that all the time. Uh, that's what this. That's what this podcast is. Self awareness. When you get to know who you truly, truly are, not who your mama wanted you to be, not who media tells yeah, you you should be. When you, city you should yeah, be. when you hone in on who you truly are, or at least try to get to know who you are, self become self aware. You can then. You're then like easily led to everything that's yours and that's meant for you. Absolutely. Before we move on to our last point, I just wanted to say, I think sometimes we can want shit so bad. You know what yeah. I mean? We can want it so bad and we have all these expectations about them that we're that we're attached to them in a sense. And when you're speaking in a spiritual sense, when you're so attached to something, you're not going to manifest yeah. that thing. You're crushing the creativity you can have on the yes. thing. You're so pressed to do it. Once you eliminate your desire and the desperation for it, and you just go out and do it like you got nothing to lose, it's a whole different level of creativity that you can be because you're not worried about if this don't blow, hey, who gives a fuck? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm like me I'm and I'm having fun good. with yeah. it. Yeah. And once you detach from the desire, absolutely. Mm, yeah. Because I think about, I was so stressed yesterday in a sense i had to do some brand work and i be having it in my mind exactly how i want it to go and when shit don't when i'm actually doing that thing and it don't go exactly how i yeah. want it to go it go it's haywire i get stressed I, like i literally wanted to cry yesterday I, I had to just shut it down and try again today but you have to go into these things loving it with no expectations yeah no expectations on what You'll get in return. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, a day of creativity. If we go in there to make a t-shirt design, don't... I know you might have one in mind, but don't be so set on that one. Mm -hmm. The goal is a t-shirt design, not the specific one you got in your head. Exactly. And I, I'm... Bro, I get really bad at that. Yeah. Because, like, like you talked about before, my imagination is really vast. As a creator, it has to be. So I have things in my head exactly how I want them to go in real life. And nine times out of ten, it never goes yeah, that way. I, I never did. I know you, for me, it ain't even a nine out of ten. Ten out of ten times in life, it has never, never. went how, it, how I saw it going. Yeah. It has been points where, like, okay, I think it's going like this, and it actually did. Yeah. One step out of the 15 went the way yeah, that step, I thought. Yeah, a step. One I mean? step, that, yeah. That, that's how I thought that would happen. You woke up. Is that the step? That went the way the you steps. wanted to go? <laughs> I wanted to wake up. I wanted to get dressed. And then, yeah. Like, But as far as the entire day, you ain't going to never ever plan your entire day out correctly and it happened that way nah you can only too many unknown you can only control the controllable exactly and that right there is something you got to learn with balancing the ambition you can't worry about what you can't control yeah i can't worry every time i drop a tape i once i get it i upload it to spotify and things like that that's when i have to like start to take the deep breaths and let, mm. let it be known that i can't control nothing else yeah. i've done my part but everything else i've prepared everything is set whatever happens after this just happens yeah you have to detach yourself from i guess the expectations and i know this it, it kind of sounds really easier than it oh, really yeah, everything is. is said everything is easier said, said than, than done than applied, because like. especially in a creative aspect it's a very vulnerable thing like you hear artists say yeah. I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. Facts. Like facts, like it's a vulnerable area to be in when yeah. you're putting yourself out. Like this is vulnerable. Yeah, you yeah. know, right like here, yeah. it I all. Share, I share stuff about my grandmother. Yes, like, even with the music, like, I share stuff with my grandma, my father, mm -hmm. my kids, myself, like yeah. everything. I get on here and I tell stuff to. I say stuff in this podcast that I've only said to you. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it fact. is. It's a vulnerable space to be in for sure. But. Like you said, you can only control the controllables. If it's yes. outside of your reach, try your best to try to build some type of system that will at least take your mind off of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ease your mind. For me, like I said, once my album is uploaded, everything is done, and I'm just sitting back kind of waiting. I usually play the game a lot more during those time periods than I normally do because I need something to distract my mind from... If not, if I'm just like calmly, even if I'm meditating, because meditating, as we have come to learn, is not about 
silencing everything but feeling everything. Yes, I always, I always fucking say that. But my girl Brianna Weist put it into perfect terms for me. Stop meditating to feel calm and start meditating to just feel. Just feel. I be needing, like I said, a tactic or something to take my mind off the con- the uncontrollables at times, but that's a technique that you have to apply, and it's going to be different for everybody. Definitely. This weekend, I took a social media detox because I do create content online, and we know that I've been open about this. I've had this struggle with being a consumer and a creator on the app. It's like, yeah. it's such a fine line between those two things, and this weekend, I did a detox. I, di- I didn't even have to delete my fucking app. I don't know what it is with us as humans, but I think I'm finally here. Like, I couldn't take it anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I was literally about to go insane. And I didn't have to delete the app. Like I said, I just didn't fucking go on there. And it was, it's, I'm not going to lie and say it was a beautiful thing at first. Because, like, I had so much anxiety because I was uncomfortable. Because I was yeah. used to being on and there. So I'm used to. Yes, used to. Doop, 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 doop. Doop. And Saturday and Sunday, I had no problem. And I, what I tell you the other day, I was like, well, I'm posting a reel on Tuesday. So yeah. that's, that's going to be the real challenge. And don't get me wrong, I went on there and checked it, I think about an hour after I posted it. But little by little, as we just talked about earlier, those tiny micro shifts, right? Yeah. The more time I spent away from social media, I got, I got conditioned to not going on there mm-hmm. and checking it all the time, living my life. Like Kendrick said, on a computer. I live in my life on there because true, I create online, but that there's so much life to be lived offline. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Thanks. But yeah, that was my example on um that. It can get you sometimes. Yeah. But ladies, gentlemen, and everybody. And everybody in between. And in between. That time has come. Yes. Remember. Balance your ambition. Mm -hmm. What you are passionate about today may change in a year. Focus on one thing at a time. Prioritize. You're able to change. You're able to shape shift. Mm -hmm. Remember, primary, secondary, and then third. Yes. Take care of your primary mission out here, and everything else will fall in line. Don't worry about the uncontrollables. They'll take care of themselves. Absolutely. Manage your energy. Manage your focus. Yes. Work, but do not burn out. Work smarter. Yes. And with peace. And be yourself. Yes. Most important, above it all, be yourself. Seek seek self. Absolutely. But that being said. We love y'all. We're sending you so much peace. So much abund- abundance. Abundance? <laughs> <laughs> so much abundance in everything you need. In this moment, until next time, bye. Peace.